week we are going to be tackling a subject that can be a bit divisive, as anyone who's watched the news over the past few years would probably be able to see. We're talking about politics, but not just politics on its own. We're going to discuss Christianity and politics. I don't plan to tell you who to vote for, and I'm not going to advocate for one side over the other. Um, what I want to do today is get you thinking a little bit about the way Christians should engage in the political sphere, as well as address some misconceptions about politics and Christianity. God created everything. This we agree on, right? In his creation, he also gave us three important institutions, the church, marriage, and government. Yes? God also created the government. So if government is created by God, then it would make sense for Christians to care about what their government is doing and be involved. Jesus, as well as others in the Bible, were involved in politics. Jesus spoke out against the Pharisees and to the Pharisees, who were the religious and political leaders of Israel, with many powers being delegated to them by Rome. So you'll sometimes hear people say, oh, Jesus wasn't involved in politics, so we shouldn't be. And that's just not the case. I also want to debunk the thought that the church and state are supposed to be separate. Has anyone heard that before? This notion isn't found in the Constitution, but it comes from a letter written by Thomas Jefferson to the Danbury Baptist Association in response to concerns that they would be persecuted by the government as they were a religious minority at that time. Jefferson assured the Danbury Baptist Association that the government wouldn't do such a thing because there is a, quote, wall of separation between church and state via the First Amendment, which says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. This doesn't say churches and believers will stay out of Congress's business. It's meant to keep the government reined in. The church, which includes parishioners, can and should use its voice to advocate for a biblical worldview. Christians have historically been political. Our founding fathers, with the exception of just a few, were Christians, and even those that wouldn't say or ascribe to Christianity still signed a document that acknowledged certain rights being endowed to us by our Creator. So there's his, his, there has historically been an acceptance of certain inalienable rights granted to us by our Creator God. I also want to address this concept that we shouldn't legislate morality. Has anyone heard that one before? <laughs> and it's often confused with legislating religion. When we're taking positions on moral issues, we're not telling people when, where, how, or if to worship, or that they need to ascribe to a particular religion. If we were to do those things, then I would agree we're legislating religion. When legislating morality, we're telling people how they should treat others and how our government should treat people. These are things, regardless of religious beliefs, that we should all care about. We also need to be clear that we aren't legislating our morality, we're legislating his morality, which was given to us, and it was said in the Bible that even though the Gentiles didn't have the law, it was written on their hearts. Our Creator has already told us and imprinted on our hearts what is morally right. To take a position different from God's design and what he tells us is morally right is to be willfully ignorant or to try and suppress that belief. Politics are an inherently moral enterprise. All laws legislate morality in some sense. We have speed limits because we put a value on life and driving too fast and recklessly puts people's lives in danger. So people will say, sure, but who are you to legislate morality? Well, who are any of us? Are only atheists allowed to legislate morality? Everyone is trying to legislate their version of morality but it's the Christians that are being told that they're wrong for doing it because we're biased on our, uh, on our views or what we think is morally wrong. Those people forget or ignore that everyone has a bias and a worldview that drives their beliefs. And I think that they're wrong and, and, and so does the Bible. It's always the Christians that are picked on and told to get your Jesus stuff out of politics. An atheist has a worldview that drives their thinking and views. The people that are vocally pushing for the transition of children or advocating for abortion, they have a worldview and a bias driving their thinking. Every single person has a worldview that informs their beliefs and their view on morality. 
So anyone saying we shouldn't try to legislate our morality because it's wrong for Christians to do so, they're doing the same thing when they go to the polls or take a position on whether something is morally right or not. I also see, and I think that this is an area that's affecting the, the, broad, the broad evangelical world right now, is people taking a position that they would rather not vote. That they don't like either candidate, so they're not going to vote. Or they're not going to vote because they have citizenship in heaven already. And Jesus is king, and he's already won. And that's true. A time will come when Jesus returns, and things will be made right. But until then, taking a view that you can just ignore what's going on is apathetic, and it's inconsistent with what the Bible tells us to do. Paul had the same citizenship in heaven that we do, and he still exercised his rights as a Roman citizen, and he criticized Rome. John the Baptist had the same heavenly citizenship as us, and he criticized Herod and lost his head by doing so. We are given a specific right to vote in this country, and it behooves us to use our voice to advocate for the biblical worldview, as that worldview is focused on saving lives. To abstain from voting is to act as though only salvation is important as a Christian, and it treats our Christianity as though it's an insurance policy. I just had to do my annual insurance review and re-enrollment for my benefits at work, and while I have heavenly citizenship and God is in control, I still had to sit down with my husband and a calculator to figure out which insurance plan was going to make the most sense for us. We don't shirk our worldly responsibilities just because we have citizenship elsewhere. And I do understand that when you look at our current presidential candidates, neither one fits the ideal biblical worldview. I would argue that contrary to what they'd like you to each think, um, as they all want the evangelical vote, neither ne they, they each have issues with uh, whether they be considered Christians or not. However, what we need to do is we need to look at the platforms and the policies that each party stands for and assess which one most closely resembles the biblical worldview. On one side, we have a party that's okay with abortion up to birth, and another party that allows for abortion but limits it. We have one party that's viewing, being viewed as the party that's in the, that helps the poor, and another party that is viewed as being in the pocket of big business. Each political party has a platform, and within those platforms are positions about politics and policy, and politics and policies are about morality. So you cannot avoid political parties if you think morality is important. Deciding not to vote because you don't like either candidate is wasting the rights granted to us by our government, a privilege first century Christians didn't have when they faced legitimate persecution for their faith. When God gives us an opportunity to further his kingdom, we need to do so, and that extends to voting. We need to take our right to vote and cast votes that will promote biblical values and further God's kingdom. No candidate is going to be 100% perfect. If anyone here is married, then you know that when you pick your spouse, they didn't check every single box. But you still made the decision to marry that person. Why is it that with voting, that we feel the candidate has to be 100% perfect, but we don't do that with anything else? The next thing I want to chat a little bit about is how do you handle, you know, what do you do when you hold a view on a policy that the Bible disagrees with? Your politics do not determine your salvation. What determines your salvation is the way in which you view Jesus. Think of the jailer of Paul. Paul told the jailer to believe if he wanted to be saved. But I would say the word believe is loaded. Muslims and Latter-day Saints believe in Jesus, but they're not Christians. We're told demons believe, but they're not Christians. A large percentage of Americans would say that they believe in Jesus, but I'd posit that they aren't really Christians when you dig into it and find out what they actually believe. If politics are moral views, and moral views are part of Christianity, then it is required for Christians to hold certain moral views. If you are to truly believe in and trust in Jesus, then you can't pick and choose your moral views on things where the Bible has something to say about it. You don't get to take your Christian hat off or compartmentalize your Christianity. It is who you are. Your theology should inform your views on policies. It's not the other way around. 
If you find yourself taking a position outside of a biblical worldview, it's not the Bible that's wrong. And I also want to touch on, because this is this is going to be a hot topic on the ballot this year, so we're going to talk about abortion. If you don't have a right to life, then you don't have a right to anything else. As Christians, we should be interested in protecting lives. After all, part of preaching the gospel and making disciples of Christ is to save people from certain death. We need to care about the unborn and protecting them when they don't have a voice. A.W. Tozer has been quoted as saying that Christianity has become so watered down that if it were poison, it wouldn't kill, and if it were medicine, it wouldn't heal. Let's make sure that when we're engaging with the world, that we aren't presenting a watered-down version of Christianity. And we need to remember, you're a Christian 24-7, 365. And then I'll end, and then we can open it up for questions with something Pastor Dan shared this week. We need to pray about voting, inform ourselves, and vote for the candidates that will bring about the greater good as determined by God's word. This means finding the party that's most closely aligned with the ethically moral truths and values of the Bible. God needs to be part of your thought process when making decisions on election day. And if you're not sure of a candidate and what their positions are, you can visit VoteYourFaith.net to learn more. And then I can open it up for questions if there's anything you want to chat about. I don't know if any of you uh, saw the show on TVN this week called The Prayer for the Nation. Is, did anybody get a chance to see it? I wish they had talked it up. It was excellent. It was a five-person panel, and what they were talking about was everything. Our um, responsibility to vote, and, um, and just a lot of things. But what I got from it is we need to find the truth and stand for the truth no matter what. And I think right now the problem is that we don't know where the truth is because you think something is the truth and a few minutes later you'll hear it's not. But the Bible is the truth. So it's got to, you know, we have to base our decisions on what truth is on what the Bible says. But if you get a chance to watch it or you can bring it up on um, whatever they bring it up on, A Prayer for the Nation, it's also going to be on TBNIN tomorrow morning at 11.30, I think it is. It's only an hour. It's excellent as far as telling Christians what our responsibilities are. Never mention the candidate, never mention the, uh, uh, a party. Didn't even really mention a lot of platforms because just the way they talked about it was what's truth. You know, and he did bring up abortion because that is an issue. And he said there's probably many more um, anti-abortion people in this world that don't speak up because of fear of saying something to somebody else who is pro-abortion. Right. Um, but it was excellent. So it's Eric Hasselbeck, is that his name? Those of you who are, what is it? He, well, he, he's the moderator. And Robert Jeffers is on, and then three other people, the one, uh, Ramirez, you may have seen him, I saw him on another show, and a black woman who is a, um, I forgot what, she's kind of a reporter or something like that, and this other pastor, I recognized his face, but I didn't catch his name. Excellent, excellent hour, a worth your time before Tuesday. Anyone else? I purposely didn't write as much because I thought there'd be a lot more conversation happening today. <laughs> Ms. Anita? Yeah. Election day? No, no, no. Tuesday. She said it's going to air again tomorrow morning, right, Marsha? Uh, tomorrow. Eleven o'clock, eleven thirty on TVNIN. TVNIN. Okay. But look at your, look at your on the menu, and uh, and I think I almost got it on my phone, and then I lost it. So I don't know if you can get pulled up on the phone. I saw a video of a segment of one of the presidential rallies, where a person stood up and yelled, Jesus is Lord. Now, I'm not going to mention any names, but 
She, she said, you're at the wrong rally. Go to the other one. And all the people screamed and yelled and yes and clapped and, and, and so that told me right there what I needed to know. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I did see that clip being shared. Um, and I don't know prior to that if the two individuals were being disruptive or not. They say they weren't. Some people said, have said that they were. I don't know. Um, definitely the context uh, and the way the sentences got linked doesn't uh, put that in a favorable light for the Christian community. 30 years ago, that would have been uh, a, a killer for your campaign. Anyone else? Everyone wanted to talk about this last week. I thought for sure. I was like, I'm not going to write as much. <laughs> Yeah, I think like Pastor Dan was saying, uh, we can't be afraid to like hurt people's feelings and we can't, um, you know, we need to speak up more about what's right and what's true. Um, and also, like, I, I was uh, looking at the Bible earlier and I, I was looking for this verse for a while, but um, it's, um, I came to cast fire on the earth and would that it would, I came to cast fire on the earth and would that it were already kindled, I have a baptism to be baptized with and how great is my mistrust until it is accomplished. Do you think I, I have come to get peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For from now on in the house, there will be five divided, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, and so on. But um, I mean, really, we're not supposed to be coming together and happy kumbaya. You know, like we need to stand on what's truth and stand on what's in the Bible, or else, you know, we're all going to fall and, you know, no one will be saved. Yeah, absolutely. Being a Christian is not meant to be a, a walk through through flowers. We're told that it's going to be challenging for us. We're told that there's going to be persecution for standing with what the Bible says. And I know we've talked before and said if you're if you're not going through that or if you're like everybody I'm talking to is like cool, and you're like I love your Jesus stuff. Double check and make sure you're presenting the right Jesus. Okay, but I think the other thing that we have to remember is that for every single decision, we should be praying over it. Absolutely. And when we forget that and listen to the rhetoric on either side, yep. we're in trouble. The last song we sang today is I Speak Jesus. And that, that song, as soon as I heard it a couple months ago or whatever it was, I said, that is so true. And with this election, we just have to speak Jesus and say, Jesus, you're, you're in control. Help me to do what I have to do. Protect, you know. But uh, that, that song, I said, Jesus, to take a stand for Jesus and use his name. And I think, you know, to Miss Betty's point, too, we, we need to pray for discernment and wisdom as we go to the polls. And regardless of the outcome, Okay, if it's a candidate you didn't want, we pray for our leaders. We pray for our government to to steward for us as best as they can, because that's what we need to be doing. We don't want to see things falling apart. That's not the goal. We pray that our leaders can make the right decisions for all of us. Uh, when, when we take a stand for the Lord with people that don't agree with us, we need to do it in love first every time. But we need to do it. Um, we've got the message for the world. It was, we're commissioned for that. If, if it involves politics, so be it. It involves politics. And we have to stand up and again, do it with love because typically the people that we deal with are not doing it with love. And, uh, Louder voices win arguments sometimes. Right. But that's okay as long as we express the biblical views and what the Bible tells us to do. Yeah, and you kind of touched on, you know, if it's a political thing, let's all remember too that a lot of these moral issues have become political issues. They, they didn't start as political issues. They've become, they've been co-opted and now are political issues and now you're told we can't talk about these things because they're political. We don't talk politics. 
these are moral issues and we need to remember that that what is or isn't political changes as time goes on but what is and is morally what is and is not morally right doesn't change so I would also just um, encourage people to remember that we probably all have friends or know someone who's on the opposing side of this political thing, but it's it's not political um, to believers. Like it's moral, like you said. And um, I just had someone post a whole bunch of stuff that wasn't true and. Um, but she believes it, like deeply believes it. Um, and I just, I just scrolled past it. Like it's not going to help to get into a, a discussion with someone online. Um, if she and I were face to face and she asked me what I thought, I would be honest with her um, and still love her because these people are lost. And God tells us most will not choose him. Most, right? That's a sobering word because if you know a hundred people, does that mean 99 of them won't? We just don't know what that number looks like, right? So just don't engage in a, a battle that you're not going to win. Um, pray for them and pray for our country and pray for each other that we remain strong in the face of adversity because I, I don't know, I just feel like it's, it's going to get worse. And I think that's good advice. If you, if you are online and you're scrolling and uh, you see something you don't agree with, just keep, keep going. You don't, if you can't respond in love, just don't engage. You don't have to go looking for a fight at somebody's Facebook page or their Instagram thread or whatever, Twitter, X. Are we skirting around the word evil? I haven't heard that once here, but I think there's so much evil now, especially this political thing right now, and evil as in lies, evil as in no respect for human life. Um, who the heck cares what a movie star thinks? You know, what made them any smarter than any of us? You know? Well, the idols that we've all built up, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, let's look, I mean, look at your presidential candidates. So for a lot of them, they've become idols for people. The celebrities go out and they make these endorsements because they're idols. We don't, you know, we need to be careful about yeah. who, whose opinion we're listening to and the media that we're consuming at any time, uh, but also during this time. Yeah, but do you, do you do you believe that there's evil in in this whole political conflict right now? Do you feel, absolutely? Do you feel? I feel it even. I, I think sometimes I shut the television off. I don't want to hear it anymore. I generally uh, choose to not consume a lot of the uh, the content on the election cycle unless I need to consume something like writing this. I didn't have to go to CNN or or Fox or whatever to, to write this, but I yes, I mean. The enemy is at work, and I, I would say the enemy is at work in, in in both areas, right? So, like we said, neither party is perfect, neither candidate is perfect, um, but the, I think there's a big push to continue to divide people. We we know that people have crept into the church, wolves have crept, crept into the church to divide the church and to get the church to be, um, you know, out of step with each other when it comes to certain beliefs. There, there's division amongst evangelicals. That shouldn't be. Yes. Just remember God. I don't even want to know. And I don't think Satan is doing God's work again for the greater good. So we have nothing to worry about, right? As long as we believe in Jesus. And vote, because we have a, an obligation to vote. <laughs> Anyone else? I'll give everyone back some time today. <laughs> I think I guess. Do you have anything to say specifically about? Do you have a question?
Do you have any? I'm not endorsing up here. <laughs> no, if you, but if you've been paying attention for the past year, I think you'll figure out where I'm going. <laughs> do you have anything you want to share with us as far as your thoughts on voting on Tuesday? Did you already say what you want to say? I think that you have. I think that if a Christian is going to sit and decide not to vote, that that's not. We're not being stewards of the kingdom. That you cannot sit back and make a decision that you don't like either candidate, so therefore you're not going to the polls. Because it's not just voting Trump or, or Harris. We're voting for other people as well in this election. We're going to vote for people that are within our local communities, within our state. And, and then also we're voting for uh, representatives at the federal level. It's not just the two candidates that are papering the, the media right now. We're voting for, I think it's something like 4,000 different individuals that will have to steward for all of us. So you cannot make a decision. I don't like that, that I don't want to vote. Go vote. Pray about it. Ask for discernment. Ask for wisdom and, and research. Don't go along, go in there blindly. Make, I'm not, I'm telling you, go, you know, go do this. You've listened to the things that I've had to say over the past year. You've listened to, excuse me, Pastor Dan, but go research the candidates. I said, uh, voteyourfaith.net is the, the website that I would say you can go find out where these can, all of these candidates stand on the varying issues. What is the website? Voteyourfaith.net. Vote your faith. Vote your faith. Dot net. And you can go find out where they stand on, on all of these different things and make a decision from there. Oh. I, this this whole thing just bugs me to death. This year. But anyway, um, you, when you watch the commercials, the uh, uh, political commercials, you would think that one party is the only thing that's important is abortion. There's so many issues right now that are so important in this country. I mean, crime. Right. Economy, illegal stuff. Absolutely. There's just so many other things, but the only thing that you get beat into your head is abortion right. issue. You would think that women are running out every week getting an abortion. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. I mean, you have one, though, we do. I, I would say that if, if you make a decision to be a single issue voter and abortion is where you're going to make that decision, it's not a, not a bad place to decide to, to draw that line and say, I'm making a decision to vote for this party on this specific issue because, like I said, if you don't have a right to life, you have a right to, you don't have a right to anything else. Right. So you don't have to, you don't have a right to immigrate to a country. You don't have a right to com commit a crime or, um, take advantage of the judicial process that we have in place in this country to defend yourself or to get, uh, you know, recover if you're injured. It, the right to life is of critical importance, and that's, I think, why it's such an issue right now is, um, you know, we have, thankfully, the overturn of Roe v. Wade that happened, and, you know, this is now a state's right issue right now. Um, Thanks to our former president. And, and many states making the decision to ban abortions, um, but other states seeing that, or candidates seeing that and feeling like, oh, this is a chance to tell people that, oh, women, you've lost rights. Women haven't lost any rights. Only women have the right to murder. You know? No one else, no no man has the right to just decide to go kill somebody, but women have that right. Ironically, they call it reproductive rights. Well, that's the, yeah, the twisting of the killing. language. It's killing rights. Anyone else? I'm going to be sad I'm here. Um, also, I wish that they would say, when we're, when we're debating or when we're interviewing, you are not allowed to bash the other candidate. Because the hatred that I hear from one party towards the other candidate, we've heard it a billion times, and I know the more you repeat it, the more you think it's true. And, but I wish that the, the moderators would be smart enough to say, if I catch you bringing up the other candidate, I'm cutting you off right there. Because then they have to talk about where they stand on things, not why the other candidate is a horrible person, is right. a Nazi or, or you know, the moderators. It's just craziness. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was 
was just wondering, you know, um, like I was in, in Mariano's the other day, right? And so this guy, he just sort of came up and started talking about like something with the politics. And I, you know, I mean, I listened to what he was saying, but I really didn't feel like comfortable, yeah. you know, making a comment, you know, one way or the other, you know I mean? But he, I mean, I didn't know him, right. he didn't know me, but he just started voicing out his opinion about, you know, these, the candidate, you know, yeah. and I, I just, you know, I kind of just shook my head, but I felt really like, uncomfortable. You know, I, I, right, I didn't want him to start talking to me in the grocery store right. about something that, you know, I didn't even know him, and I, I didn't want to talk about, but right. should I have said, you know, should I have said, well, no, you know, I don't want to talk about this, or should I have just, you know, just... Did like I did, I just said, well, okay, but I didn't really agree with him. I think that's, I mean, really how you handle that situation is, uh, you know, dependent on, on what you want to do. For me personally, I would tell somebody, if they're coming up to me and I don't know them, and they're coming at me, depending on their, their tone and demeanor, if they're coming like hard at me about something, I'm probably going to tell them, hey, I'm trying to do my grocery shopping. <laughs> I'm not interested in having this conversation while I try to make sure I'm not getting moldy strawberries that are costing me six dollars a pint. <laughs> well, yeah, why I brought it up too because it, it's happened to me before, like you know, with other people. Like I'm in the gym, right, trying to you know lose a few pounds, but yet somebody is coming up to me, you know, wanting me to say something about you know one of the candidates, and I didn't want to. I mean, yeah. I don't want to say anything, you know, I don't want to agree with them. Mm -hmm. But in a sense, you know, but I mean, it's like every time I see the person, I know that they're going to want to talk to me right. about this political. I mean, maybe they're trying to sway me to their point of view, I think. But, you know, I just feel like, you know, in that forum, you know, it's not appropriate to talk to somebody really that you don't know about the politics. Right. I think there's a right and a wrong way to, even when you're evangelizing someone, there's a right and a wrong way to do it, right? So, you know, you... If someone's coming up to you like that and, and it's happen, happening repeatedly, then it, it's maybe setting a boundary and like, hey, John, really like having conversations with you, but the way you're approaching the political stuff with me, it's rubbing me the wrong way. If you want to have a legitimate conversation, and if you're open to the conversation, you could say, Here, here's how I would like to have that conversation if you want to talk about it. Like, you can't just come at me sideways all the time and think that that's going to somehow change my mind, but we can have a discussion. I don't think, that, you know, especially when it's like strangers or someone's like, oh, here, like you're walking downtown, they're like, sign, sign this petition. If you, love the, if you love the trees, you'll sign this petition. I don't know what else you're asking me to sign. I don't have time to read 15 pages right now. And a, a lot of the time when they're trying to sell you on a certain position, they're actually doing the opposite. And you can even let them know. Right. Uh, that you know, you're, you're coming at me the wrong way. You're missing your objective. You may want to rethink this whole strategy. You know, if you're actually trying to get me to, to believe what you believe, you're going down the wrong direction. Hello, everyone. Um, in high school, people would tell me to believe in other things when I believe one way. I keep telling them that I believe one way, not the other. I also tell them that the more you say it, the more unbelievable it is. Because the more you hear it, means you're just saying a lie, just trying to make it true. Right, well, sometimes you got to keep repeating it to yourself so you can believe it, right? <laughs> yeah, but that's yourself, not about other That's people. what they're doing, though, right? Yeah. They're repeating it to you, so that way they're like, oh, yeah, now I'm finally... Yeah, but I believe it. If we have nothing else, enjoy your week. Come to Trunk Retreat if you are interested in participating in the Halloween festivities and the pet parade. Uh, and don't forget to vote.